What's going on everyone? It's Abdali here, bringing you guys coverage for the PAX Pokemon League that happened at PAX South 2015. If you guys are unfamiliar with the PAX Pokemon League, let me tell you what this awesome thing is. So, we've got a bunch of Pokemon lovers like yourself, like me, uh, that get together, uh, go through an application process to become gym leaders, elite four trainers, and a champion. So uh, they organized it. Uh, there were a bunch of gym leaders. There were the elite four, and then there was a champ. So if you were at PAX, uh, PAX South 2015, you could have gone through, find the people with the green scarves, um, challenge them to a battle, and if you beat them in a battle and earn their badge, um, you would be able to rise through the ranks. It was amazing. Um, you've got to get all eight badges, then fight the Elite Four, and then you'd have a shot at the champion. So, in case you guys are interested in that, definitely check in the description right now for previous coverage uh, playlists of my escapades throughout uh, PAX Pokemon League and the website that you can visit. So, do that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to chronicle all of the battles throughout PAX South 2015, so if you guys are pumped up about it, definitely smash that like button and share the video with a friend, because here we go. The first battle I had was against the uh, Dragon Tamer. Apparently, um, he is the Tamer of Ancient Beasts. His name is Spirit. Now, if you go to the site by clicking on the link in the description, um, it'll take you right over to it, and you can look at their bios. But I'll save you guys some time, and I'll read the bio for you, just because uh, I want for you guys to get the sense of who we're battling here. All right, so from the moment he received his first Pokemon, a newly hatched Rattini, uh, Spirit knew he loved two things, battling and dragons. Upon reaching the age of 10, he began his Pokemon journey, his Dragonair helping him battle his way through the Hoenn gyms with ease. With ease. However, Spirit's overconfidence got the better of him, and he lost... Uh, at his first stop at the Battle Pyramid. Interested the boy's potential, Pyramid King uh, Brandon took Spirit under his wing and trained him in the arts of Pokemon battling. Under Brandon's tutelage, he trained and studied in Hoenn's many time-worn ruins, becoming fascinated by the legends of ancient beings and the power they represented. He now works with his dragons towards uncovering the secrets hidden within the world of Pokemon to further improve his battle skills, delve with him into the myster mysteries of Pokemon, and earn the Ancient Badge. Okay, so we're going to see if I'm able to earn this Ancient Badge just by going through the replay. So looking at his team, it's all full of dragons, and that's really cool. Um, this is my team that I'm kind of sticking with. Um, I've got Vaporeon, that is a, a great um, support Pokemon. He's got, what has he got? I think he's got Wish, Substitute, Baton Pass, and Scald. I've got the Caesar. Uh, which is great for priority. Uh, he's a bulky, specially defensive Caesar uh, with bullet punch, sword stance, um, bullet punch, sword stance, knock off, and roost. That's right. Then I've got dual screens Klefki with the T Wave support. I've got Mega Manectric that works very well with Landorus T uh, because he's got hidden power ice, he's got thunderbolt, flamethrower, and volt switch. Conkelder is awesome. He's a great staple with the assault vest. Knock off, Ice Punch, Drain Punch, Mock Punch. And then I've got the uh, Therian form of Landorus, which is Stealth Rock, U-Turn, Knock Off, Earthquake. So, looking at his team, I have to get the rocks up because three of his Pokemon will be affected hugely by that. Dragonite, his multi-skill will be broken. Altaria will take 25%, and so will um, his uh, Boom Bursting... What is that Pokemon? Um, that Bat. That Bat Pokemon. <laughs> anyway... Um, I also have a pretty good amount of ice attacks on my team. Conk Elgator's got the uh, ice punch. Uh, Manectric's got the hidden power ice. So we're going to be pretty good. I'm thinking of, okay, leading off with Klefki to get the screens up and then switching into the appropriate counter or check. So let's see how we do. That's my thought process upon uh, whenever you get that 60 seconds or whatever when you're looking at the opponent's team. You have to really utilize that. Don't just go ahead and pick all your pokes. Um, okay, well... Instead of that, I decided to go to Landorus. Okay, maybe I thought something else at the time. But anyway, Landorus is going to go through. Um, I am going to intimidate him, uh, which is good in case he's a physical one, but then he busts out the focus energy. And I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be one of those Kingdras that get like 100% crit ratio. This is not going to be a fun time. So I'm thinking, I don't really have an answer to water dragon typing because I don't have anything that's super effective against it. So um, right now, I'm going to go into light screen, maybe thinking it's a special attacker. Um, but now he goes right off the bat and reveals his hidden power. I'm like, great, a Kingdra with hidden power fire. And on top of that, he gets a critical hit. I'm like, oh my god, really? Right off the bat? So he's got to be holding a scope lens or something like that. 
So knowing that he'd go for Hidden Power again, I'd switch into Vaporeon over here. Uh, just to sponge this pretty well. Uh, this Vaporeon is, um, I want to say Citrus Berry. So it's fully defensive. I'm just going to go for Substitute right now uh, because what I want to do is I need to actually stall this guy out of his moves because I really don't have an answer for him. Uh, the more Draco Meteors he uses, um, he won't be able to use that again. And then he's stuck with whatever water move or anything else. So he's getting crits left and right, and I'm kind of getting worried because this thing may be able to sweep my team because the thing about crits is that if, uh, if you get a critical hit, it ignores all stat um, increases, decreases. So he can keep on Draco Meteoring and not have to worry about anything. So um, I did a little bit of Wish Pass straight over to uh, Klefki because I knew that he'd go for Draco Meteor again. Um, so now I've got my Klefki with um, pretty much full HP. I need to paralyze this thing and sacrifice Klefki in order to do so because this thing is, free, is pretty fast. So I need to slow it down, put a status on it, and then go from there. So I don't want to eat another Hidden Power Fire. Um, so I'm going to go back into Vaporeon over here. Um, expecting that, and I know Vaporeon can take a critical hit, um, HP fire, um, oh my god, there they go again, these crits are real. So, he brought me to under 50% on my Vaporeon, so my Citrus Berry activates, gives me a good chunk of change back, um, I'm able to get another substitute off, um, with my substitutes, um, I'm hoping to be able to wish and pass the substitute onto another Pokemon, so one, I get a free hit, and, uh, in case I do take a huge hit, that Wish will be able to uh, recover all that health back. So here we go. Um, goes for the Draco, nails it. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to break my sub. But I don't really know what Pokemon I'm going to bring in to attack this thing. Uh, Vaporeon's not going to do anything to it. Klefki can't do anything to it. That's two out of three of my Pokemon. Uh, Landorus could come in, but I don't want Landorus eating a Draco Meteor or anything. So I'm going to bust out Conkeldur. He's um, Assault Vested and fully specially defensive, so that's great. Um, I can either go into Knock Off, which will knock off whatever item he's got, which I'm thinking is Scope Lens. Uh, but he brings in his Latios, and Latios is going to get owned by my knockoff, which is great. Uh, but it was a good play by him because he used the Reflect. That would have been like a one-hit KO, just judging by the damage that that did. So anyway, I don't want to eat a Psychic right now, so I'm going to go right into Klefki, uh, predicting a Psychic move. And lo and behold, I do get that prediction correct. So right there, I'm able to take only 25% damage off of that. I go for my own screens right now because I need them up. So I've got my light screen. He's, his light clay is knocked off, so his screens aren't not going to be around for a long time, which is good on my part. So right now, I'm going to go for T-Wave. I know he's a fast foe. I don't really know what his other move is. He revealed uh, Reflect, Light Screen, and Psychic. So, I don't know, Dragon Pulse? Um, that's what I'm thinking. So if I leave Klefki in here, I can pretty much stay. He gets another unfortunate crit right there, which was out of nowhere. I don't know what's happening. This is an uphill battle for me. So if he's got Psychic and Dragon Pulse, then I'm good to bring in Caesar over here and start setting up. Because I can sponge a Psychic with my super specially defensive Caesar, Maxed out in HP and maxed out in special defense. So I'm going to shrug all this stuff off. So knowing that, I'm going to go for Swords Dance. Um, he's either going to switch out and get me a free Swords Dance, or he's going to bust out Hidden Power Fire. And I'm going to be pretty much messed up. Um, but luckily, I do have the light screen up in case he did go for Hidden Power Fire. So that wouldn't have done that much damage. So I'm going to go for the knockoff right over here. Luckily for him, he lives with a, th a sliver of health and goes for Memento. And Memento is pretty much um, you sacrifice yourself in, in, a, in order to uh, lower two stages of attack and special attack on your opponent. So that was lucky. And I'm like, oh, great. Well, there goes my Swords Dance. So I'm at a neutral Caesar over here. I don't want to risk the Fire Fang or Fire Blast or Flamethrower, whatever this thing wants to do. So I'm going to go into Landorus and lower his um, attack one stage in case he wanted to go for Stab Earthquake. And uh, he didn't. He went for Rock Slide instead. I don't know if he was predicting something or misclicked, but uh, Earthquake would have been a good one. So he's not going to want to stay in since his uh, attack is lowered by one stage. So he's going to go out for Dragonite. Now, um, seeing that, I get a free setup turn, so I'm able to get out the Stealth Rock. Unfortunately for me, he did it right when Dragonite came in. So he's going to go for Dragon Dance. Now, I'm very familiar with Dragonite because I love running Dragonites on my teams. So Dragon Dance is definitely hinting at a weakness policy set. So what I'm going to do right now is, since he's one speed faster and um, 
He's one, one stage attack. I'm gonna go for a U-turn to break the multi-scale and then bust out Klefki over here. So I don't know if he was gonna go for a dragon pulse or a dragon claw, but I need that reflect up. So I'm going to either sacrifice Klefki or um, you know, hopefully, I don't know, get the reflect up and live something, but no. He goes for Earthquake. So he's not a choice banded set, as we can see over here, and we knew that since he Dragon Dance. I know that he's rocking that, um, that awesome weakness policy. So right over here, I'm not sure how bulky he is, and I do not want to activate that weakness policy. Although I do have the um, uh, Hidden Power Ice to do four times super effective damage on this guy, I don't want to do it just yet, just in case he's a very bulky variant. So he's minus one attack. I'm able to live this um, super effective Earthquake. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch, just to give him a little bit more damage so that another Pokemon can come in, do some work, and possibly finish him off without activating the weakness policy. So here we go, now he's at minus two. This is an awesome team. That's why um, La uh, Lander Asterian form and Mega Manectric work so well together because they can Volt switch out into each other and totally lower the opponent's speed, uh, not speed, but attack with the Intimidates. So anyway, I go for the knockoff, knocking off his weakness policy, which is awesome. And pretty much he's in KO range right now, which is great. He's at minus two, knocked out this Dragonite with the help of the awesome team that is Landorus and Mega Manetric. Anyway, so he brings in this paralyzed Kingdra over here. Uh, I'm gonna go for the knockoff again, um, simply because, I don't know, it's knocking off a person's item. Why the heck not? Everyone needs items. Um, so here we go. Now we've got this awesome um, Garchomp in here. Well, it looks like I went for Earthquake anyway. Yeah, there's no one, well, there is someone on his team that could uh, potentially, you know, dodge the Earthquake, and that's um, Altaria. Anyway, he gets another lucky crit over here. I don't know where, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, and then a lucky roll on my, um, on my Earthquake. I got a very bad roll and I didn't knock him out. So he's gonna go for, I don't know, Earthquake, Dragon Claw. I can resist this and then go for the Bullet Punch. That's why I switched into Caesar. Um, regardless of what he wanted to do, I can either go for, um, I could go for a Sword Stance, predicting the switch, or I could just go for safe damage and knock him out. I was, I was thinking about that play for a long time. So I'm like, all right, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna kill him just to get rid of him. Um, he probably already predicts the bullet punch, so just knock him out, get him out of there. So that's a dead Garchomp, which is amazing. That's good for me. So he's got only a couple Pokemon left. He has his Altaria, which he's been um, kind of saving towards the end. Noivern, that's the name of the bat Pokemon. <laughs> Noivern. Okay, so this thing's always got Flamethrower, and that I know for sure because I run a Flamethrower on mine. Flamethrower, Boom Burst, Draco, U-Turn. Um, that's what I run. So I'm going to bust out Vaporeon over here. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh my god, watch watch him get the burn because he's on some sort of luck streak. And lo and behold, he gets the burn on Flamethrower on my Vaporeon. So I was fully planning on wishing, subbing, doing all that stuff to get back up to full health. But nope, it's not going to happen. Um, the Air Slash is Stab, since it's Flying type, but Vaporeon did an awesome job this round, um, helping out the team with the wishes and everything like that. So, I think I got this game in the bag because Mega Manectric can outspeed his entire team, um, and go for the Hidden Power Ices on everyone. So here we go, the fully strong, four times super effective Hidden Power Ice on Noivern. He's out of here. So Noivern's gone, thank goodness. Um, here comes the Altaria now. Okay, so I am going to predict that he will Mega on the first turn. So I'm kind of debating, okay, well, do I go for the Thunderbolt? That'll be neutral, or do I go for the Hidden Power Ice? That'll be um, super effective. So I'm going to go for it. We're going to go for Hidden Power Ice um, just because I want to do as much damage as I, as I possibly can. I know it's not going to kill, but we'll be okay. Um, Altaria goes for the Earthquake, and that is going to do a big amount of damage because my Reflect is gone. I can't take it. No worries, because I've got plenty of Pokemon in the wing that can come in and do some work. Um, now that the Altaria is a fairy type, I can easily knock it out with a bullet punch um, because it is super effective and it's priority, so that's great. Um, Altaria got checked by Caesar, even though it was probably carrying like Fire Fang or something like that. No, not Fire Fang, Flamethrower. Um, or Fire Blast, they could carry either one. So all we have now is this Kingdra that gave me a really hard time at the beginning of the game. Um, I could easily go in and knock this Pokemon off. The only thing that it can do to me is a Hidden Power Fire, um, which will most likely do it. It reveals right now that he was using the Scope Lens set. Hidden Power Fire is going to do a big chunk. 
uh, but not enough. It's not stab, and I'm fully special and uh, specially invested. So here we go. We're gonna go for another knockoff or a bullet punch. Um, I don't know. Why did I go for bullet punch? Yeah, I could have gone for knockoff in hindsight. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and he does get the min max roll right over there. He's able to knock out Caesar, but that's okay because I got plenty of other Pokemon that can come on in and finish him off. This crazy Kingdra gave me a lot of trouble. It wasn't that fun. Anyway, I'm just going to knock him off. I didn't want an Earthquake or U-Turn or anything like that. Just knock off that scope lens and be done with it. So there you go. That was it, ladies and gentlemen. That was my first battle against Spirit in order to earn the Ancient Badge. Yeah! Okay, so we got ourselves an Ancient Badge. It is awesome. I will put this on off screen. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what it is. You can also look at the thumbnail to get a little bit of a close-up of what the Ancient Badge is. So we've earned it. Our very first Pokemon, PAX Pokemon League 2015 badge. It was amazing. Um, I had a fun time. Um, I took a picture with Spirit. Uh, let's see, where is that picture? Picture is right. 3DS captured. Done. There we go. That's, a, that's the picture. So that's me and Spirit right there. It was a very good battle, my friend. I love the fact that you use the critical hitting uh, Kingdra. I've seen people run that on Flygon as well, uh, which is very cool. So love the team. Um, all Dragon team is really fun to play anyway. But there's got to be some sort of way of defogging. Um, maybe teaching the um, Latios uh, a defog to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. Um, I would do that, especially if you're running the Dragonite. Anyway, guys, that is it for the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we have uh, the end card right over here. In case you guys want more PAX Pokemon League battles, all you have to do is click on that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video with a friend. If you guys want to check out the previous playlist, um, look right over here uh, to the PAX East 2014 playlist and the PAX Prime 2014 playlist. Um, yeah, they're all for your enjoyment where I went through the PAX Pokemon League. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, right over here, bam, at Abdalination. So, yeah, like I said, subscribe, share the video, like the video, and uh, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye, guys.